Hey, how you doing? It's Emilia here. We're talking about IT management. How can you become an IT manager? If you're already in the tech industry, you've got your eyes on the prize of management, of taking on some sort of leadership responsibilities. We're gonna give you some of my recommendations, myself having been on that journey. I've been in tech for over two decades and started off like a lot of people in technology doing help desk, helping my friends and family in my own time with their stuff, with their IT problems, their IT challenges, and then over some time, moved myself into management. So a little while ago, I was introduced to this awesome product by a company called Sysaid. Now, I myself being an IT pro, I know the challenges of just managing tickets. So this is where Sysaid Copilot comes in and integrated into this design is this awesome chatbot, but essentially designed to make the agent's life easier. You know, sometimes it can get overwhelming because there are so many tickets that are coming into your standard service queue. You can literally just ask it to give you a summary of the ticket and it will give you what you need. And I absolutely love this because now I can focus on other things because this will give me some recommended solutions. And what's amazing is this is actually using information that is already built into your organization. So for example, you've got a whole bunch of tickets that you've worked on previously, comments, the relevant descriptions and closure notes. It'll use PDFs, it'll use SharePoint information, anything that's inside your organization based on how your infrastructure is set up in your company. And yes, you can then go and contact your user, go and contact them over emails, over Teams, or you can ask the chatbot to create this for you. It will cut out so much time from your already busy schedule. So yeah, you wanna get the hassle out of managing your IT tickets, go check out Sysaid down below in this video description. Now one thing, remember to also click on that subscription button. On the bell, we release videos on all things tech. And we've also got a whole bunch of tech training courses that you can check out down below if you wanna become better at what you do in technology. Now here's the thing, most techs are gonna go in one of two avenues. They're either gonna go full tech and maybe wanna get into a specialized industry. So for example, if you're really passionate about cybersecurity, you may just wanna be focused on cybersecurity and you may wanna get certified in cybersecurity and that's what you wanna be doing because you're an expert in cybersecurity and you can make a lot of money becoming a niche focused tech in lots of different industries. The second is you move into management where you have either overall management across the entire IT spec, everything in IT, or you have IT management responsibilities on one specific thing. So an example could be a help desk manager, right? Somebody who is now looking after an entire help desk slash service desk function. And that also could be true of an IT operations manager. You've also got IT infrastructure managers where here you are now focused on managing infrastructure, servers, networking. You've got people who look after cybersecurity, cybersecurity managers. So there's lots of different IT managers. A lot of this will come back to the size of the company. Small companies may only have one IT manager. Some bigger ones may have a few, and even the bigger companies are probably gonna have lots of IT managers that are specialized in their thing. Firstly, why do you wanna move into management? This is the sort of question that you need to ask yourself before you even get started. Is it just because you want the responsibility? You wanna be the person in charge to call the shots. And sometimes that's a good thing. Here's my experience. I saw stuff in management that I wasn't too happy with, right? And I thought, you know what, I can do it better, which is why I sort of started pursuing the management front. That could be the main reason. Another reason is because you just want more money. The reality is that people who do work in management positions will end up earning more money in the long term. So this is where you've now got to have a think about, well, what sort of IT manager do I want to be? Do I want to be an all-rounder? An all-rounder, so that way, you are responsible for all of the IT, not just one little bit, not just looking after the server management. And this is the one thing that I find sometimes is people who, let's say for example, you've been a systems administrator for a long time. You love tinkering with the server space, you're playing around with network devices, you're tinkering with the cloud, great. Then you move or you want to move into management and then you realize, oh, now that I'm an IT manager, I got to start dealing with users again. And the reality is, yeah, if you're gonna become an IT manager and you wanna make sure that everything is under your control and everything is managed correctly, then you have to get a lot more back to the basics. But now from an IT leadership perspective. In a bigger company, 
you're generally going to have, as I said, a few IT managers, and then they're going to report into maybe like an IT director, a head of technology, or even your chiefs, right? Your CIOs, your CTOs, chief information officers, technology officers, and security officers, okay? And they're sort of the ones at the very, very top. And they're more than just technology professionals. They now understand the business very, very well and how technology and the business can work together to achieve great things. So what we're giving you here is some of my recommendations around becoming just an all-rounder IT manager. And these skills are the skills that you can then use and develop and craft, right, over some time. It's gonna take you a bit of time to then potentially move into a head of technology or a CIO, CTO role. Because all of those roles, generally a CIO, CTO, have been IT managers of some sort throughout their career. You're not gonna get a CIO role just like that. Here's the thing, if you're gonna be a IT manager that's responsible for all the day-to-day -day of IT, then it's good for you to still continue to remain technical, continue to remain hands-on, because now, you may have a background in network engineering. Well, now you need to understand around the system space. You need to understand about cybersecurity. You need to understand about the basics of service delivery, ticketing systems, SLAs, understanding about all of the governance. You'll have to learn a lot more about data. How is data used in the organization? You wanna be able to get the data, clean up the data, and make sure that the data is good so that the business can use it. Get a good enough high level overview of the entire tech stack. Now that may also be getting your hands into the development space because a lot of IT managers and especially the leaders, the, the ones at the very top, they're gonna have development understanding as well. Understanding what DevOps is, understanding around front-end, back-end developers, understanding what they do, understanding their methodologies, understanding the languages and understanding how they build and deploy applications, websites, web development, and all of the above. At least understanding all of that from a high level is gonna put you in a much better position than most other IT managers that may never understand about development in the first place. Because if you're gonna be now managing a team of professionals, I always recommend remaining technical, staying hands-on, but also acting a little bit like a mentor, where you are now leading this group of people. And if you can talk their talk, it's going to make you a better manager. So if you're going to be managing sysadmins, service desk people, and maybe a front-end developer, well, it's probably good that you understand what they actually do. You're going to be setting up their KPIs, their key performance things. What do you want them to achieve? How are you going to check on their performance to make sure that they're doing a good job if you don't actually know what they're doing. It's good to understand the different support levels, level one, level two, level three. What do they actually do? Understand the different roles in development. Understand the different roles in cybersecurity. What is a red team? What is a blue team? Understand what architects do. And then you'll be a bit more of an effective leader. Now moving into management, you're no longer just a tech. You're taking your hands off a little bit and now you're taking on some more managerial responsibilities. The buck may stop with you. When something goes wrong in an organization from a tech perspective, they're not looking at the sysadmin, they're not looking at the support person, they're looking at you as the manager. So you need to be able to explain what's happened. You need to be able to communicate. You need to be cool, collective, calm. Learn how to talk technical things to non-technical people. That's one of the hardest skills for a tech. So being able to dumb it down is one of the most important skills that I think. Being able to speak something to somebody who doesn't understand anything about technology is gonna make you a more effective leader because now you're going to be engaging, liaising, communicating with other managers in an organization, with other directors, with senior leaders. You may have to make reports. You may have to do run meetings. You are gonna be accountable for the health of your environment. Get good at writing, practice your writing skills, practice your speaking skills, your public speaking. Hey, people are more scared of dying than speaking. As a manager, you're gonna to have to learn how to speak and speak well, potentially in front of people. You're then responsible potentially for the IT strategy, for developing a roadmap where the business needs to go over the next three years. That is gonna require you to understand the tech that is under your management. What is working well? What is not working well? Are there risks? Understand what the business needs. The first thing that you wanna make sure is whenever you're developing any form of IT strategy now as a manager, 
is that your IT strategy fully, fully, fully aligns with the business strategy. So this is gonna require you to understand what the business is doing, understand what the business goals are, understand where the business is going, and then talking to the right people in the business to make sure that it's in full alignment with what you're trying to do as an IT manager. Your strategy and roadmap, all the stuff that you wanna do needs to be in line. And also, as an IT manager, you need to know what's going on in the IT world. You need to stay up to date. Stay as up to date as you can. Read stuff, attend events, breaches that are happening. Know what's going on, know the upcoming tech, so that then when you're developing your strategy, you know what you're actually talking about. Not uncommon for IT managers to be responsible for the IT budgets, for the CapEx and for the OpEx, the capital expenditure, and the operational expenditure. What is the IT stuff that we need from a day-to-day -day perspective? What are the things that we're wanting to plan in future? What are new purchases that we want to do? What are projects that we want to engage in? You're going to need to talk a lot more with vendors, with suppliers, making sure you're getting the best deals, setting up SLAs, writing contracts. But also, are you good at managing people? You know, maybe if you've been working in tech for a while, you already are good at managing people. Maybe not management by title, like you don't have the manager title, but you have already been acting as a little bit of an escalation point. Your fellow colleagues come to you for help, for support, for mentorship. Maybe you're like, hey, I'm ready for management. I wanna go and start applying for IT manager roles. Great, maybe you need to go and interview for a role. What is the tech stack? If you need to improve on your communication, go and practice in front of a mirror. If you've got all of that, Right, and you're confident and you feel that you, you, you know your stuff, start asking, okay, start asking. In a company that you're at right now, start speaking to your manager or somebody else in the management team and say, hey, look, I'm, I'm really interested to learn more about IT management. I wanna take on some IT management responsibilities. You may even have the opportunity to take on some leadership abilities, do some project management, take on a lead role in something. But if you don't ask, you will not receive. So if you don't have that opportunity in the place where you're working right now, it's okay to start looking elsewhere. There's a lot of IT manager or IT lead roles that are out there. Get your CV to a state where it's very, very strong, very, very confident. Think about throughout your career where you have demonstrated leadership abilities or leadership qualities, or if you've had an opportunity to lead or mentor people. If you've had a project, you needed to do a deliverable of something, and you were the person that made the thing happen, throw that onto your resume. Make your resume look as much as a manager without the title as much as possible. Highlight your leadership skills in your resume and then start applying. But I would say there are just the two main things that we've sort of harped on several times. Get a better technical understanding and knowledge across the tech stack. Two, develop your management skills. Try to take on more management leadership responsibilities if you can. And then put your hand up and just ask. So if this helped you out, please let me know down below in the comments. I would love to understand your journey. What are you doing right now in technology? Where do you want to head? Subscribe, click on the bell, and we'll see you on the next video.